Welcome back, everyone, for the final session of the day. You're all grabbing that caffeinated beverage and heading in the room and finding your seat. And I want to know if your mind is overflowing with new information and ideas yet. Are you feeling a little bit of information overload in the middle of the week here? Drop me a note in the chat box. Watching people raise their hands and things. While you're doing that, Chuck's going to keep an eye on that. I forgot something really important in the last session. And yes, I heard about it. I heard about it from those in attendance, and I heard about it from Susan in here. She said, hey, you forgot to announce. <laughs> I've been overloaded since March. Amen, Kristen. I agree. Um, I forgot to announce who won the coffee sampler for their team. And so let me tell you now, that would be Brooklyn Botanic Gardens and Lucia You've already heard from Susan. Congratulations for winning that for your team. And this session is the biggie. We are giving away 60 to 90 minutes of online web training for your team. So everybody that is in attendance through this session will be entered for that. And the topic for this afternoon is AceWeb email templates. And Lindsay is going to be talking about that. We had a lot of people request this topic when we gave that opportunity. And I want to tell you a little bit about Lindsay. In addition to providing customer support, she also takes care of our website, aceware.com. She does a lot of software testing. If you use a SQL Server version, Lindsay is the one that does that testing. She does the testing and the documentation for Quick Pick. And if a little bit of behind the scenes note, you know, she is putting up these uh, recordings for us. And something you may not know about Lindsay, she's holding her breath now, but Lindsay is quite <laughs> proficient in axe throwing. I don't know if any of you have done that for a team building activity, but we did that in January. And Lindsay could nail that bullseye more than any of the rest of us. So she is quite impressive there. We don't mess with Lindsay anymore. But that's not what you're here for. You're here to hear about AceWeb email templates. Lindsay, I am going to turn controls over to you so that you right. can show us all of that. And I'm going to go off camera so we can enjoy your presentation. Thanks, Lindsay. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I am going to show my screen, and hopefully you're going to see the correct one. One. Uh, Sharon, <laughs> you'll just get, you see the PowerPoint, right? We do. Okay, good. <laughs> that whole two monitor setup, you never quite know uh, what's going to happen. It's always a surprise, I think, the first time. So, so hey there, everyone. Good afternoon, like I said. Um, Sharon, thank you for the uh, the uh, calling me out on my axe throwing. I'm going to say it was beginner's luck, but maybe, I don't know, I, I may have a, a new marketable skill. Who, who knows? Uh, so we're going to talk about our ACE web email templates. You learned about student manager ones this morning, and now we're, we're getting into the the web ones. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about where they live, what you can do with them, and then I'll show you some examples of just sort of minor things you can modify to, to give folks a little more information, maybe make it a little, a little prettier, all that good stuff. So jumping right in, our ACE web email template. I hit the space bar on the wrong thing. There we go. So uh, student manager, all of the templates are in that module catalog email templates. They all live in one place. ACE web email templates also live in one place, and that is wherever your, your ACE web server is, there is a folder in there that is just for templates, so page templates and email ones as well, and that is WConnect ACE. Email templates will all end in .txt. That's how you are going to know that it's an email template. And things that are in them, you'll find, you know, just regular text. You'll also see template tags, and you'll get some tips in several of them, which makes it uh, pretty, pretty helpful. Hey, now, uh, I do want to Lindsay, say, yeah. Lindsay, this is Stein. Just jumping in here to mention that if you use alternate interfaces on AceWeb, then your folder may have a will have a name other than Ace. For the there, there's uh, the templates are specific for your alternate interfaces. So uh, you can have one email template that lives in your main ACE folder, and then if you have alternate interfaces, you can have additional templates in those special folders. So just throwing that in. Thank you, Stein. I, I uh, forgot to include that one. Uh, so we're, whichever folder yours is, alternate interface or main, wherever it is, make sure you know what your folder is. 
uh, there is a note, uh, email templates for ACE Web. Not everyone should be modifying these. I do think, you know, the, the way we have a keeper of the flame, that, that sort of person, one person who's going to be responsible for making those changes, that way you, you really have a, a handle on, on what's going out because these are much, um, you have a lot of things that, that are going to be system generated. So it's, it's, not, as, it's, it's not quite as hands-on as student manager. So let's talk about what's available. Office notifications. So something happens, somebody does something online, you can configure Ace Web to notify you. Welcome to the system. Hey, welcome. Thanks for creating an account. Uh, request, a catalog request. So if you request information, you're going to get an email about it. Confirmation. That is that is the most popular one. That's probably the one we all want to know more about. It's it's what folks see after they've enrolled in a course. Course proposals. And I'm going to pause here just for a second. If we could get a show of hands, how many folks are using the the course proposal feature? Okay, I'm watching here, Lindsay. I'm not seeing a lot, Lindsay. I, you know, less than, gosh, less than 25 yeah, percent. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll maybe talk a little bit. We'll we'll try to go a little more in detail about that. It's a it's a nice way to, well, get proposals for courses, so you're not necessarily taking in lots of paper. But we'll get there. Also, share with friends. We do have a little link on the, the course description page that you could send it to a friend. So we're getting the word out, making sure everyone knows what's going on. And password reset. Notice we do have, we're, we're, we're getting quite a few here. So if you need to reset your password, you're going to get an email. And a waiting list confirmation. Hey, your name's been added to the waiting list. So what do we, what what's, What's the anatomy of a template? Student manager, you have the header, you have the body, you have the footer. Kind of the same idea with Ace Web, but things may be, they're, they're structured a little differently. So things to look for in an Ace Web template. One, you can use HTML. So, you know, things like text or images or, you know, font styles or colors. You will also find template tags, which I'll show you a few of those. And again, there are some tips, there are explanations, you know, here, if you want to use this, that, you know, the other, the, that'll be near the end of the, the email template. So, where are we? And custom sections, we will talk about that as well. So, when I talk about HTML, this is a, uh, this is one of the email templates. It probably all looks like a brand new language to you, that's okay. So HTML, things like here's the body, here's we're going to use HTML, right? You know, tables, table rows, table cells. So you'll be looking for things like that if you want to use HTML with it. We also have tags, template tags. They are all over the place. So you will find things that generate data from student manager. So something like LC Dateline. Well, what is that? Well, that, that's, that's the, the system saying, all right, pull in dates, right, for courses or you might see things that have the course time or location. So that's one kind of template tag. The thing to know about a template tag is you will always see two pound symbols on either side or hashtags for the, the younger folks, right? So you will know it's a template tag if you see those. And also you'll find tags that identify sections, right? So same way there's the header, the body, the footer for a student manager template, there is that same idea with the, the ACE web templates, email templates as well. So things like opening or a table or, you know, confirm title. And there are special configuration options. We will definitely talk about a few of those. So you'll find those at the bottom of the email template and it will say config. So you know exactly where you're looking. And let's see, this one, that's our registration confirmation. This is the sort of tips ex explanation of what the different bits are on the template. So you will find explanations there. And if you don't find one on the template, where's a good place to look? The help guide, especially when, when working with uh, ACE Web, when working with ACE Web email templates, the online help guide is your best friend. Take advantage of it, bookmark it, use it often. So some of those custom sections you will find uh, one is a, a calendar attachment. So the same way you have the option to send a calendar attachment with a 
confirmation in Student Manager, that is something you can enable with an ACE Web email template. You can also customize the subject line on several of them. So if you wanted, now, okay, you can do this. I should back it up. If you are using one of the ACE Web email templates, so let's say this one, right, thank you for your registration. If you change the subject, it will always be the subject that you change it to. So, you know, you, you wouldn't want to use something like, thanks for registering for math, because everyone who registered for a music class is also going to see that subject. That's a different conversation if we were talking customized templates. We're not going to do that today. So, you can customize the global subject of a template. When we are editing templates, Nice, fun, easy little thing to do would be just change the look and the feel by using HTML. You can include images that way. Uh, folks might want to use their department logo, right? So you would have that as the header of the email, or maybe in the signature you would have a link to Facebook or you know Twitter or something like that. Uh, you can format the text. You can add links back to your site. So you know you can make things bold welcome and if anyone else is playing animal crossing it's very exciting and you can take pictures of all your villagers so things like that you can have in your email templates just to make them prettier right more catchy it's gonna it, it just looks a little friendlier right so if you are going to use images however they do need to be on the ace web server in your respective images folder. So the same way you have a template folder, like that ACE folder for the, the main, if you have alternate interfaces for the main interface, uh, whichever interface you're using, there is an images folder. That's where they all need to be. Uh, if they are not there, then you will run into problems and folks just, they'll, they'll just get a big red X where the image should have been. All right. So, what are some things we did talk about? You can customize the subject lines. So some of this will just be some uh, repetitive information here. Where can we do that? Our welcome template. We can do it with the catalog request, your confirmation, or your receipt email, and office notifications. You can also use template functions to include extra information or format existing information. I'll show you an example of that. So what's useful? Just a few here. One is show up class. This is a feature that is also used, uh, you can use it in other areas of ACE Web, like when you, uh, after you log on, right, you get your welcome page, and it's here are courses you might be interested in. You can do the same thing on several of these email templates. And so this is where I will put in a shameless plug. Hopefully you are all in attendance at uh, Maxi's session, she was asking about using subject codes, right? Subject codes are also interest codes. So when someone's enrolling in a course, they're getting that code stamped on their record. When someone is creating an account in ACE Web, if you have codes displaying on the web, they can select their interest. So that, used with this little show up class function, you can actually have in the email, here are some other courses you might be interested in. So that way you're still driving traffic back to your site, you're still making money, bonus money, because you have this sort of function you can use in the template. Get memo is a really, really great function, and I, I rave about this one when talking about student manager as well. It's a great way to uh, display or pull in a huge chunk of text without having to uh, take up space in the template, I guess I could say. So you're, you're setting it up in manager and you just have this little catalog code basically, but it's a memo text code. And you have all the information there and you just plug this little function on the template and it's gonna fill all of it in for you. So especially when uh, you, know, you want all of your program policy in one place and maybe you have to change policies. And so instead of having it on an ACE Web email template where you have to type it all in, and also in Student Manager all typed in, you create one of these little memo text records, and if you ever modify that, it automatically would fill in anywhere this function would be. It's fantastic. Date list is another great one. I'll show you how that works. Basically, you can get more information about a course uh, meeting date and time 
you know, on, on the confirmation so that if you have sessions that, you know, maybe they're different dates or different times in your room use records, they'll appear as line items rather than just, you know, Monday through Friday, five to nine or whatever. We can actually give more detail. And conditional statements. If something is present or if something equals something else, then show this on the template. So you will find them all over the template. They, they are already there waiting for you. So ACE Web, maybe I should have had this one first. There are different template functions for ACE Web. Uh, student Manager has its own set, ACE Web has its own set, and a full list is available in the online help guide. They are all there for you to read about, memorize, write essays on, enjoy all of them. They are there for you. Are there any questions so far? I, I don't want to go through this too quickly if we've, we've got questions popping up. No, you're doing fine. Carry on. Okay, great. Great. We will keep going then. So let's talk about some examples. And we're going to keep coming back to this. Rule number one with examples, check the help guide. If you, you know, find that, oh, I want to try this function, head there so that you know exactly which pieces are on it, right? Notify office.txt. This is, it, it, the, the title tells you exactly what it's doing, right? It is notifying the office. What does that mean? You have an INI setting for ACE Web called notify office. And you can either have it turned off or you can have it on. If it is turned on, you will receive email notifications. If uh, you know someone enrolls, someone creates an account, someone requests a catalog, uh, re, uh, requests a password reset, uh, proposes get, words, Lindsay submits a course proposal, you will get a notification. It is a wonderful, wonderful feature. So if you want this, check your INI settings, get with your tech to ask about it. Hey, is this turned on? The other part of it is there is an INI setting for office email. That is typically your uh, program department email address. And as long as we have a value in there that says send the notifications to this address and you have it turned on, you will receive office notifications. How about we, we have a show of hands? I, I would like to think that most folks are getting off this notification, but let's uh, let's find out. Okay, I'm watching. Oh, lots more hands this time. Excellent. Excellent. Just a couple seconds. You know, light in the day. People are. Mm -hmm. uh, you have over fifty percent. Wonderful. I am glad to hear I, it. I would love to have a hundred percent next time. Next time. So, get with your tech if you aren't sure about it. Let's get that turned on. What we're going to look at for the office notification is uh, I'm going to show you one of the template tag examples. PC needs. It's, it's already on your template. So uh, the same way we have that special needs field in student manager where you can put in information, right? Is there, is there something important we need to know about? We do also have that field available when you're setting up an account online. If you have your displayed. And I don't necessarily want to jump around already, but hey, why not, right? Let's find a browser. So what I'm talking about here is this special needs field on the account setup or account creation page. And that does match up with on your comments and history tab, there is a special needs field here. So Cool thing about the office notification, using that PC needs tag, if you have a, a user who's entered something in there while creating an account, or maybe it's just still in their, their name record, right? That's gonna display on the email that you receive in the office. It will not go to the individual unless you have it on a template that's going to them. Chances are real good you don't. So it is a Wonderful little thing. If you were to look at your notify office.txt template, you would find just a little tag, PC needs. That's it. And that will pull in whatever the person has entered. And in this case, when I created an account, just this tag shows you what the user put in the special needs field. So it will be right there for you in your notification email. Another one is welcome.txt. 
pretty generic. This is the one, hey, thanks for creating an account, right? It's, it's just sent to the individual, just say, again, you, you created the account. Uh, again, if this one's going out to someone, you are probably also getting an office notification about it. For a template function, uh, if you were to use one on this, a pretty good example would be that show up class that I, was, I, that I talked about before. It will give you a list of your upcoming courses. Now, there is a whole lot here. If we look show up class, so beg date between, blah, 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 you don't have to know all of this. We are not expecting you to know exactly what to put here, there, and everywhere. Uh, with the help guide, with the template, functions, descriptions of those, you have plenty of examples. And so if this is something you wanted on your template, you could pop over there, copy it, and then paste it into your, your template. So what does this look like when it's generated? So again, thank you for creating an account. Here are some classes you might be interested in. Please ignore the typos, had no idea. Also, great idea. Spell check your email templates, right? You never know what's going out. But when using, you know, a, a function like when when using the show up class function, if you were to put it in the welcome dot text, I create an account. I've selected my interest while creating the account, and automatically, thanks thanks for doing this. By the way, here are some courses you can go enroll in right now. Also, the get memo function to show you an example of that on here. Again, helpful for including things, program policies that may need to be changed. You don't want to have to do this in multiple places. You just use a little get memo. In this example, I set one up, you know, our policy so that when I send it out, here is some information about our program. So you'll notice at the top, this is on the template, and then it fills in exactly what would be in that code. In this case, this is the text. Pretty cool, huh? So that is also a, a nice little function to, to have on there. Another one, cat request.txt. This is your template for requesting a catalog. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go back over here when creating an account. And you will find, if you have this enabled, I know some of you have asked to, to just not have that on your sign-up page, that's okay. But if you have on here, send me a catalog of all courses you offer or send information on interest areas I selected. Ah, that's not a good one to show you quite yet, is it? We will we'll skip forward and come back. If you've requested online, you're going to get an email, information request, thank you for your interest in our programs, your request for a catalog, and additional information has been submitted. So you can add on there uh, all sorts of different, different bits of information. One thing that is already on the template, you will notice, do you have your program information in your INI settings? I hope that you do, because if you look at this part here in purple, these are other examples of template tags. These tags in particular are looking at your AceWeb INI settings. There are three settings that it's looking at, the help person, help phone, and help email. If you have those filled in on this template, also on welcome, I think on reg confirm, kind of all over the place, there are already pieces of, of, of there, there are already tags waiting to fill in that information for you. So if you have questions, we already know, you know, put, put this name in here, that phone, that email. And in my lovely example, you will notice I have a blank line. There is no one from, to, to contact. It's, it's just no one, right? You're going to have to call or email. So make sure that you have those settings filled in if you're unsure, if you know how to check your INI settings. Do it. If you don't, get with your tech who can walk you through that. RegConfirm.txt, that's the fun one. And probably if you came to this session and you're interested in Ace Web email templates, this may very well be the one that you are most interested in because this is, this is what will go to your registrant when they enroll in a course, right? This is the receipt. It's so they know that they, they, uh, that they paid. Uh, they're going to know where their class is, what the title is, you know, anyone else they enrolled. There are so 
so many options with RegConfirm, and we could spend probably a day, if not a week, on every single piece of that template, what you can do, what you can remove, what you could add. We're only going to look at a few. I mentioned earlier customizing a subject line. This, this is a simple thing. You may want yours to say something different than registration confirmation. Uh, you, you may want something like, uh, this is your receipt, or thanks for enrolling, or, or something there. So if you're interested in customizing subjects, any template you find this on, pound pound XX subject, to enable this feature, all you would need to do is take out the X's that you see here. And that would turn the feature on, and you can customize your text. So if you wanted to change or, or what, let me back up. Y'all, it's Wednesday afternoon. I don't know if you're feeling the same way I am, but words apparently are becoming very difficult to put together. Uh, a function that you might see on your, your regconfirm.txt, you may not have it on there. You may find now that you're very interested in this. Uh, it's, it's date list. I mentioned it earlier. It's a different way of laying out course date and time information. So to see both of these in action, I changed my subject to this is a confirmation email, right? So that's definitely customized. And then if we look down to the next purple rectangle, next purple box, you will see date list function. What I did here was I set it up so that you would get every single day that the course meets and the start time and end time. Notice that uh, I should say what's already on here is, is the, uh, the, the bookend to, to this bit. Uh, you already have your, your dates, right? It would just give you, you know, your begin date through your end date. That's already on RegConfirm. Meets is already on RegConfirm. It just gives you, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from eight to five. So where is that pulling from? That's an excellent question. And I will show you that in just a second, as soon as I remember which course this is. It doesn't tell me, so that's not terribly helpful. But we can find one, and it'll, it'll be OK. So let's just look at a course here. I don't want that, though. Great, do it. Come on, I know I have something. OK, so right, this Sunday from 7 to 9, if this were the confirmation that I had, if this were the course I had enrolled in, if this were the confirmation I had received, you would have seen, uh, you would see this. We're going to bounce around everywhere. It's going to be great. So, you know, that meets Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's pulling from the course time field, right? The uh, dates, 6-3 to 6-4, that's pulling from begin date and end date. But again, if you have multiple sessions, and of course it's not there. Which course was I using? Oh, let's see. Let's see what this one. Oh, we've got people in here. Okay, this is a good one. So in something where you have multiple sessions, you might not have room use records in there, and you might wonder why, and, and I wonder why as well. The moral of the story is, if you have multiple class meeting dates, and let's say you need to skip a date, or let's say there's going to be a different location for one of them, using that date list function is going to spell out every session. So it's more detail, probably more helpful for your students. Are there any questions on that now that I've, I've just sort of mixed it all up everywhere? Nope, you're doing fine, Lindsay. Great, great. OK. So. That's all I'm going to show you about RegConfirm. We're going to go forward, and if you're thinking of questions that you might want to see, you know, is there something we can do with this or that for our confirmation template, type those in the box, and we will come back to them. Another one of our templates is the Send to Friends. So I, I want to make sure we know sort of what they all look like when they are sent out, and then we can go back and talk even more about editing. So if I were looking at a course in ACE Web and I wanted to send it to a friend, this is what I would see. I would click, you know, email to friend, and then I just get a basic form, tell a friend about this course. 
you're going to, you know, see the text. Here's what's going to go in the email. You can add a personal note, and it's basic, you know, who, who am I sending it to? It's a simple email that comes through. Subject is learning opportunity. I don't remember if that has a customizable subject or not, but this is this is what is, is sent out in it. Pretty simple, you know, so-and-so suggested this. We're going to send you the information. All right, here's the course. Here's the description of it. Here's a link to register on our site if you have questions, call or email. Uh, if you were to want to make changes to, to this one, you know, it, it may be you might want to change, you know, just, just text on here, right? Also, you don't have to change anything. This is this is more of a here's what we have for you to make your own, but it is perfectly fine as it is unless you really need to add more specific information. So you may find that you want a different introduction or, or something like that. You may find, uh, you know, instead of the, if you have questions, contact us, maybe you have um, specific contact people for different uh, departments or something. You may want to just put all their information in. Next up is our wait confirmed. So if you add your name to a waiting list, now, in order to allow waitlisting, there are two options for that. Uh, one, there is an AceWeb INI setting that is a global allow waitlisting. If the course is full, folks can, you know, just click to add their name to the list. There is also the option to not use it globally and instead just allow waitlisting at the course level on the course record in Student Manager. But if you allow it, you can, with this template, change the subject here. So instead of waiting list confirmation, you could say, you know, hey, you're on the waiting list or whatever it is. You do have the ability to do that. And again, this is going to be the, uh, the, the feature function of the day, apparently, using show up class. Again, the idea of, well, they can't get into this one, but we don't want to leave people just sitting out there in space somewhere. Why don't we try to encourage them to enroll in something else? And again, that is going to be based on their interest codes. Questions yet? No? I'm just going to keep blowing through this. Carry on. All right. So that. So when folks get the confirmation email, again, if you had the, the upcoming class function in there, you know, you've been added, we'll contact you, and then the meanwhile, you might be interested in these courses. That was text that I added, and again, it's going to give you a list of courses based on the parameters that you put in. I believe this one is looking at 15 days out. So, let's talk about your course proposal. So folks aren't really using it, right? So let's just talk about course proposals in general. How about we do that? AceWeb gives you the ability to allow folks to propose courses directly on your site. Course proposal .awp. This is a link that you could not have published anywhere. If folks know what the URL is, they could go to it. Uh, you could stick it right on your, your main page. If you didn't publish it, you could, you know, email it to specific people who you want to you know, propose their course. What this does is, is what you're filling out on here is actually being loaded into Student Manager. And there are over in Module and Catalog, the same way you have your catalog code, there is a section for course proposals. The idea behind this is you would just get these, uh, you know, sort of record, you have the ability, once you've looked through the proposal, you can approve it. You can make it a regular catalog code. You can say, great, we're going to offer this. And whatever you have on that form for proposing it is going to be filled in so that you now have a record who, who proposed it, right? If I had put information in here, uh, whatever the description I said it would be. So it's kind of letting someone else do part of the work for you if you have the same instructors every term and you know, you, you open a, you know, call for course proposals. If they're sending you Word documents or, you know, 20 emails in a row or you have some sort of web form that's online, this is a, a 
more streamlined way to get it into the system so everything is all in one place. So I would fill this out. I would put in whatever information. I'll say you can require, not require. You can hide things. Maybe you don't care about wanting to know who they think the audience should be. You can take that off the form. Um, it's, it's all here for you. And then you would just get a simple little email that just says, we've received your proposal. And whatever you said that name would be, the description, here it is, thanks for your interest. Again, it's super generic. You could put contact information in here. You could, you know, put, uh, let's say you, you know, accept course proposals on a rolling basis. That's information you might want to put in there. Or, you know, the window is only open from this time to that time. And if you don't hear from us, too bad. Or maybe we'll just keep it and you might hear from us one day. And it looks like repass.txt. That is going to be the last one I show you. And this is just simply a, an email that goes out uh, if you've forgotten your password. So if I'm trying to log in to AceWeb and I don't know my password, there's a little link that says, you know, what exactly does it say? Let me tell you exactly what it says. I feel like that would be better than making it up. Forgot slash don't know. You can come in here, you would put in the email address, and then we would, the system would send you a link. Now, and Stein, correct me if I am wrong on any counts of this. This is just sort of from going through the process. If there's more than one account associated with that email address, the email is, is just going to include, you know, every every account with that address. So you would see here, for example, Lindsay at aceware.com has my regular uh, account and also one that I was I was testing for for another school so they are are both in there hello we received a request click here to reset your password yes. yeah that's right the, see the thing is if uh, if you have two accounts with the same email when you send that email out both <laughs> both those people are you know uh, are going to get that, uh, that possibly view that email so you want to you want to you want to make a, a note that it actually belongs to two different accounts. So this this sort of just covers the fact. I guess uh, you know you you might forget that oh I use this email in uh, uh, you know my my cousin's account when I signed up on his behalf or something like that. So uh, just that's why you get to see everybody who happens to be in there. So oh, um, again, little things you could change, right? Maybe you know, Stein said, put a note in there. You're getting, you know, all of these because they're all in here. So just uh, know that that is a thing that will happen when this one goes out. That is the last template I wanted to show you. Um, have have any questions come come through yet? Because that's that's sort of sort of where we are right now. Um, nothing at all. Nothing at all. Maybe. Just make up a question. question. Chuck, we had a question this morning. Oh, on the email. Yeah. Um, it okay. had to do had with uh, multiple emails um, on AceWeb and whether or not AceWeb sends a confirmation. If you had uh, entered two emails in your profile line, whether AceWeb would send notices to uh, both emails. So if I had my Aceware email, comma, and then my Gmail account, would it send to both? Um, now, sh I did test, and it'll Aceweb allows you to use two emails, but it only uses the first email for your login. It, it'll work, but it'll only check your first login. But Stein, we weren't sure if both emails get the res like a registration confirmation or both emails would get um, um oh if you were to do um you know an email coming out of manager web or one of those tools okay. the instructor page yeah specific to yeah i believe that i believe that it will send it to both but it's been a decade or two since i worked on that code <laughs> so i can't tell you for sure uh, but, uh, but but to confirm, uh, Brittany is asking to confirm um, 
it is possible in manager to have two emails on a name but it's that first email is the one that ace web will look for when you are uh logging into an account right i believe so I, yes yeah, yeah and yeah, i i yeah. tested that on the demo that appeared to work so right right so um, i tried to we test do have a question you, earlier. you have a uh, go ahead, Lindsay, and then we we do have a couple questions coming. So, sure. So Fire. I tested this earlier with two emails, right, separated by a comma. Mm -hmm. and I actually can't even log in. Um, I guess unless I wanted to try both of my email addresses in here, but I'm not sure who would want to no, do that. That's not going to work. Yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah. Now, uh, you're running um, AceWeb 4 or on SQL or 3? I'm on uh, SQL. Okay, I'm, I did this on the AceWeb demo, which is in a VFP. So, Stein, I don't know if there's a difference between mm. 4 and 3 on the code. Uh, but anyway, be... we'll, we'll let Stein check that. I'll, uh, we have a new question yeah. here. Um, and this is from Emma here in town. Uh, can a person add somebody to their account uh, who has the same email address in AceWeb? And yeah. Lindsay, go for it. Yeah. Yes, but. Yes, and. Yes, short answer. Here's your long answer. Uh, again, your AceWeb INI settings, those are your web preferences. They, they set how AceWeb is going to work. You can allow accounts with the same email address if and they must have u unique passwords that is that is how we we do that so with things like youth programs you probably don't have a five-year-old with an email address if you do they they are like on the up and up heading with technology they know way more than the rest of us by the time they're there our our age uh, so you're probably going to use your own email address but they do each have to have their their own unique does that answer the question? Uh, it it I, does I, require, you have to set the INI setting to allow that. There's a, something, I think it's called allow dupes that you put in a particular setting, uh, oh, to, the, but it can be done, but it, it won't necessarily happen by default, but it can be done. No, it won't happen by default, but... It is the, oh, what is it, user ID source, I yep. think it is. Yep. Yeah. So you it, can't yeah. allow it. And there you go, Molt. Yeah. You can allow it, but again, requires password validation. So they do have to be unique. What else? Um, what else? And in Stein and Lindsay, the questions asked about whether uh, in student manager, if you were trying to put two emails, uh, again, like your example, uh, Lieberman at Aceware and, and then Lindsay at Aceware and Lieberman at Gmail, uh, what is typically the separator? Is it a comma or a uh, semicolon? And, and um, I, I think it varies by package, but I'm not sure which goes to which. One with Outlook and one is Gmail, or if they both use commas for the separators. Outlook uses semicolons, Gmail uses commas. Okay, which ones again, Stein, come again? Outlook uses semicolons. Semicolon for Outlook, mm -hmm. and you say Gmail? I think you, it's you, commas, yeah. You use the comma for Gmail, and again, I would suggest that uh, what you do if, if for you, the user, is uh, go to student manager, uh, put in uh, two emails on a name record, and then use the send email to student, you know, to just test that email to see which ones go through or if it gives you a hissy fit about um, um, bad formatting of the email. Um, Lindsay, any thoughts on that? You good on that? Good on that. I seem to have just locked myself out oh. so that's, uh, <laughs> that's good up. that's a good thing yeah. Um, but uh, yeah uh any other questions well, again i realize yeah. we're 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 kind of at a hump we're at hump day here in the in the conference uh we've got a lot of material going on but uh, any other questions for lindsay and then we'll turn it back to miss sharon so 
Um, Lindsay, do you have a quick access to the regconfirm.txt that you were using for your examples? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to mention one thing here. If you can scroll down to the subject line area, uh, I know you brought this up, but the thing about taking the X's out of there uh, by default, as you can see from the VCAL example right above, we have two X's in there. With the X's in there, it essentially disables that because AceWeb looks for pound, pound, dash. And, you know, computer programs are very particular about that. So if it sees those X's, it says, oh, that doesn't mean anything. But if it sees pound, pound, dash, subject, dash, pound, pound, then, uh, then it activates it. And uh, so that's why you have to go in and erase those two little X's. And, and, and at that point, uh, then you can uh, fill in your custom subject line. I don't remember what, there is a default subject line that will show up. I don't remember exactly how it's read, uh, but if you don't, uh, if, if you want something more customized for your purposes, um, that's, that speaking is the default, way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of default, actually, this lovely little site over here, aceware.com slash aw slash templates. Uh, not only our email templates here for download, but all of the default Ace Web page templates as well. So you would, you you can actually get the email templates.zip if you wanted to just grab a stack of what the the templates are, see what's in there by default. Uh, that would be a a good place to look. And I think isn't Reg Confirm just sitting here on its own as well? Yeah, it is. It, um, <laughs> yeah. So the default is just thank you for your Reg. No, 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 that's the well, that may be the default line anyhow, but yeah. uh, well, let's uh, find out. at that point, whatever it is there, it wouldn't be read because of the X's. Yeah. Okay. What is it? Um, and and then I was that. just going to mention, I know it's not in the scope of this presentation, but it is possible to customize reg confirmed templates on a course by course basis. Yeah. So that if you have a special course that has special things like parking information or uh, you know uh, special de details that the user needs to know for just this course. So you don't want everybody to see it, but just the people that enroll in this course. There is a way to do that. And if you need to do it, uh, talk to your techs or uh, they, can, they can help you set that up. Uh, but, uh, it's it's a matter of creating a, a template with a special name to it that involves the course code, and so that that is a possibility, um, just just to to be aware of. Any other questions? I don't see. I think we've given them a very full day. Everybody's ready to call it a day and rest those brains and things for tomorrow. As you see here on the screen, tomorrow is another full day. Start the morning with um, Cheryl, who we will be welcoming back. We'll give a session on student manager uh, course development best practices. We will have another open forum at noon with the four that you see on the screen there. This was a lively session today and I would expect no less tomorrow. We have a presentation from Lewis Clark State College tomorrow afternoon. She'll go over how they reconcile payments using Cashbox. And at the end of the day, Jason will be sharing how to manage those AW pendings. And I don't want to forget this time, so you know, because I don't want to get yelled at, but a shout out to Metropolitan Community College. They are the winners of our 60 to 9 minute web based training. Stacia, your name was chosen, and so we'll be coordinating that with you. And unless anybody else has anything, I will uh, call it a day and have a good evening, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Stein, Lindsay, thank you so much for the information today. Absolutely. See you tomorrow morning, Absolutely. everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>